it's um five thirty AM uh Saturday April twenty ninth, twenty twenty three, M Zeke Matavosian, uh Los Angeles, California. Um so incident happened yesterday and I was on the phone with the police and they the lady um wanna identify who she is, uh post told me made reference to a uh another situation that that I've been involved in uh which makes it obvious that well I've had police you know that my interactions with them tell me Zeke we know who you are. You're the one with that banner on your car uh, driving around, reporting this stuff, uh, and so the the elements of you know the things I've witnessed in people people's lives that I'm involved in and uh, that have happened in, in my life. This is what's developing. It's um, profit from cruelty. Uh, elements involved like uh, police police in what well, policy and enforcement uh, of scams of frivolous lawsuit um, this involvement of, of this blackmail this this framing uh, um, the sex workers involved and then there's the, the use of children, mothers using their children involved in scams, in, in, uh, um, in, and then the, the other element is using special needs kids, uh, intentionally for, for, uh, uh, income from the government and all of the, everything that's involved with that or involved in scams. Uh, that involve mothers using the, it's just so obnoxious, I, I can't, it's difficult for me to speak it. M mothers, sex workers using their kids, this element of it, like that, that, that has come to my awareness. Uh, to bribe police and the police using that to blackmail them, saying, you don't do as I say, I'm going to take have your kids taken away. So, and then, so the, the police mentioning this other reference to me makes me know they're aware, not only are they aware what's going on, which is indicated with my other interactions with them. Then if they're aware of what's going on, they're aware of my, my Facebook and my YouTube videos. They're, they're aware they're doing it. How can they not be aware? They always say things to to claim they don't to distract from, they're trained to distract from and they train to when you tell showing them they'll turn on the the walkie talkie and pretend to be there's some emergency going on when the obvious isn't. I've seen them do that. All the all of the methods that are documented they use smoke and mirrors, distraction, all the defense mechanisms, everything they do to cover up and distract from the, if, if they're intentionally doing things to cover it up and it's, if they're training to do it because of standard behavior, you see them doing over, over blocking communication. So then they know what they're doing is wrong, right? Somebody looking you in the eye and being cruel to you intentionally. for profit, using the laws and their law enforcement. 
you look at this, you see it, so I'm going to be talking to, you know, psychologists, showing it to different ones, like all kinds of people, high level people, how can you escape this conclusion? It's just like it's, it's presented to you in a platter. So she's talking to me and she says this, you, so you know what you're doing. It's cruelty for profit. And you know you're covering up, you know it involves blackmail, you know it involves uh, framing. And you look at me in the eye and continuing to perpetrate it. So it's a phenomenon I'm do documenting here. You know the difference between right and wrong. You know the difference between good and bad. You're using the law to do bad, to do wrong intentionally, and you're covering it up. You train to cover it up. It's in the law itself is written that way. Your training is written. Is, is that and you're perpetrating. You're the one doing it. Every individual is doing it. You're responsible for what you do. You're saying if you don't do it, if you quit, someone else will replace you and do the same thing. You doesn't make it okay that you're doing it. you telling me that you don't write the law, you just enforce it, doesn't make it okay that you're doing it. That's what the, the, um, uh, that experiment, the uh, Milgram experiment shows. They're pushing a button that's hurting somebody and they're saying, well, I'm doing it. I did do it because somebody told me to do it. You're responsible for what you do. And that Stanford uh, prison experiment, you have authority, you're abusing it. And you're saying you're doing it because someone's telling you to do it, because it's your job, because it's the law. All of you who are doing this, looking yourself in the mirror and see you are the one who's doing this. If there's any mechanism in your mind for you to block yourself from realizing you're doing it, you do have have conscience. You do have feel remorse when you feel do something bad, right? Or are you not? Are you either covering up that that you feel bad? You don't. You, the police tell you we they're not allowed. So that's not a policy. Police aren't allowed to tell you how they feel about something they're doing. The the moral judgment. Who came up with that policy? All of these policies that you have that enforce cruelty for profit and cover it up using the law. It's obvious you're doing it. It's obvious all the things you're doing to cover it up. So if you have to cover it up means you know it's wrong. Why, then why else would you be covering it up? So it, Every interaction with them proves this. It's a, if every one of these incidents is a piece of the puzzle, the whole picture. It looks like the stuff is happening intentionally to paint a picture. You see the picture, you're doing it so you know what's going on. Should be not, not, shouldn't, okay, so I sh just look at what it is uh, without bias, without judgment. Just look at it without any, without anger, without bitterness, because that, that is better to do it, to report it accurately and honestly, 
I should better be, you know, neutral emotionally about it. So it's not my anger speaking, it's not bitterness because I've been subject to it so much. A case study. We'll have somebody else do the case study on me. It's, it is, you know, it's just like Stanford prison experiment and the Milcom experiment put together. It, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a compound um, phenomenon that's being shown. Case study on the police and the personal experience. Somebody else look at this data and do this case study, how the individual police members are behaving. Do they feel bad that they're doing criminal activity? So they're claiming it's not criminal because it's not a violation of the law. The law itself is involved with something, is, is, is being used in that way the policies and the laws and the police and the criminals and the, all the others involved are working together to profit from cruelty. Now you're saying that's not against the law. So the law, it's all written to be law enforced. It's by done by the book. So if, if your definition of a crime were profiting from cruelty, then it is a violation of the law. The fact that it's being done in a way that is done by the by the on by the books shows the corruption of the law by those who the lawmakers the police trainers, the police means they are completely aware they're doing wrong and covering it up. They're enforcing profit from cruelty knowingly, maliciously. You cannot claim there's anything neutral about you, neutral, you maliciously perpetrating profit from cruelty using the laws and you're trained to do it and you're trained to cover it up. You are aware of it. You are trained to deny it, yet it's obvious you are aware of it. Look yourself in the eye, claim your whistleblower protection status, and report it. I'm Zeke Matavosian.